So hello, welcome along uh, to another um, session on Stalo. And uh, today I'm going to be covering uh, validations, how we can handle different types of validation with Stalo uh, for Fiori. Um, so there's, I'm going to cover three different types of validation. I'm going to cover how we can handle mandatory fields. I'm going to hand, cover how we're going to handle uh, validation on submission. Uh, based on the uh, client side logic and then also validation on submission uh, based on server side uh, logic. Um, so, uh, so I guess the thing that I'm not going to cover today is uh, the live change event. Uh, and so if we think of a, a field, an input field like this one, uh, and I look at the definition of that, I can see that this field has a live change event pointing to a routine where we can add our own custom logic. So uh, uh, any normal rules for SAP UI5 coding apply. So uh, that's uh, I'm not going to cover that uh, particular uh, piece of the jigsaw. So um, first of all, let's look at mandatory fields. I can see this, uh, this is a, a quick uh, app I've knocked up. The first field here is a, a little red star by it. It's uh, a mandatory field. How that has happened is we've configured it to be a mandatory field in the uh, in the definition at the back end. So if I just pull that up for a second, we can see that uh, uh, in fact this uh, I can look at the configuration for this particular uh, app. It's got uh, a document type of VAL1. Here we go, and if I View the data schema behind that. Look at the field level um, definition. This particular date field, DT underscore incident, is flagged to be a mandatory field. Uh, so that's all there is to that. It's configured to be mandatory. And so we just let the whole Stalo framework uh, deal with the fact that it's mandatory. When we uh, launch the form or the app, uh, the the field has a little flag on it, and if I try to submit that immediately, I get this uh, this red box. I get a message saying mandatory fields are empty. And when I click into it, I can see this uh, this text uh, it's telling me that it must be empty, and the app won't submit until the mandatory fields have been filled. So all that works just completely out of the box for free. Uh, something we we just don't need to worry about. Okay, that's the first uh, type of validation, easy, out of the box, mandatory fields. Second type of uh, validation is something that we might have uh, stored on the back end. So what I'm going to do now is put a date into this field. And I'll choose a date in the future. There we go. Um, and uh, now I'll hit save here. Try to submit, I get this uh, header bar here. Uh, there's uh, telling me there's one error. And then click on that. The incident date cannot be in the future, please correct. So, uh, so where did this uh, logic come from? Where was that held? Well, I go back to the SAP backend system. And I look at this document definition. This time I'm looking at business logic and it's a, a form level or app level user exit. Popping my document uh, type, I can see that uh, I've defined some uh, business logic for validation. And there's some example te uh, text up there. Here we go, I'm just comparing that, uh, that date in that field to the current system date. And if it's uh, in the future, then I'm calling this, uh, this standard uh, method to uh, construct uh, an error message and pass that into uh, an error message table. And then again, the framework takes it from there. Uh, so all I need to do is basically in this message class, uh, slash FLM slash ACL. I have configured message number 20. So let's take a look at that.
Ah, uh, not the message class. And number 20. And there we see I've just, uh, I've not passed any parameters in there, just put some, some text in there. So that's where the, the error message is being uh, handled. Uh, that's how to push it into this, uh, this user exit. All oh, very, very simple. And then uh, again, the framework's going to handle that and, and give us this validation error here. Okay. I'll correct that. Okay, so that uh, both those types of validation are controlled from the backend system, uh, and uh, the app itself is intelligent enough to uh, to handle uh, the the logic passed in. Things like mandatory fields could be status dependent, so uh, so so we don't need to check them at every point of the journey. Um, uh, again, that's just another configuration option. So, so that's our client side uh, logic here. And so what I've got is just two numeric fields. So I'll add uh, some information into here and there and submit that. So now I've got an error message. Number one cannot be greater than number two and uh, both fields are highlighted. And, uh, and so here that logic we add inside the, uh, the web IDE in the BAL1 controller, so it's the controller that's been generated specifically for that app. Uh, I'm looking at um, all of the validation routine, which is inside the handle submit function. And so I let it do all its stuff, which is the, uh, the mandatory field checking. And then basically I'm just adding a little bit at the end saying, if I'm looking at the num1 or the num2 field, fill a couple of variables, do my check, and, uh, and if one's bigger than the other, uh, set a flag and set the value state to be error. And, uh, and then later on, I'm just checking again that this, uh, this flag um, is set to, uh, to push out the message toast uh, to show the, the actual error message. So again, that's all very, very simple. That's going to get, uh, get called uh, before trying the submission. Um, uh, so we, of course, you know, we don't do the submission if we uh, found the error. So back at, onto the app, I'll just uh, move that down and then submit that again. And so now we've passed the client side validation, we've passed the server side validation, we've passed the mandatory field check, and so our data is successfully stored in the back end. That's how to do validations really simply using Stalo.